Not only are these meals made from Hungry Jack potatoes, but they're also made all from ingredients that can be found at Dollar Tree. Hello, welcome to Meals with Maria. Today we are cooking with Hungry Jack potatoes. Yep, I just leave that up there backwards the whole time, but those are shredded potatoes, just how life works. These things are awesome because they are shelf stable, shelf friendly, and there are so many things you can do with them. We're making delicious meals right off the Hungry Jack website. These are super inexpensive, and I'm telling you, you're gonna be going back for seconds and third, and there's also choices to make things out of leftovers. We're starting off with vegetarian Southwest tacos, and I could not believe how delicious these were. Yes, I served these with Dominican rice and beans that were in my pantry video the other day. I'll make sure to put the link in the description box for you if you haven't seen it, because you do not want to miss that rice and beans recipe. You want to start off with one package of Hungry Jack au gratin or scallop potatoes, but I'm sure you could just use a store brand too. I just find that the Hungry Jack stuff is at Dollar Tree and it's really easy to find and very inexpensive. So using something like this is a great way to use something that is shelf stable, pantry friendly, and really make something amazing out of it. You actually just want to follow the instructions on the back of the package. You're mixing hot water, sauce mix, uh, margarine or butter and milk and you can get all of those things at Dollar Tree. Put that in a nine by nine pan, mix everything together and bake at 450 degrees for about 20 minutes. The recipe calls for peppers and onions and I just grabbed one of those seasoning packets from the freezer section at my Dollar Tree and just cooked that up in a pan with some oil so that everything was well cooked. If you're using fresh, the recipe just says use a half a cup of diced onion and one cup of diced bell pepper. And you just want to add that right into your 9 by 9 once it comes out 20 minutes later. Then I'm adding one drained and rinsed can of black beans, one can of, it says Southwestern diced tomatoes. It does not say drained, but I'm used to using like the Rotel blade brand of green chili tomatoes and a half a teaspoon of cumin with one teaspoon of chili powder. And then I just mixed in all that pepper and onion seasoning mix and that was so delicious. Because I cooked that up while well, those uh, potatoes were kind of par cooking, the onions almost got like caramelized and the flavor was amazing. If you don't have either of those things, a little sprinkle of onion powder will do just fine. You wanna place this back in the oven for another 20 minutes until the potatoes are tender and golden brown. In the meantime, I'm just gonna cook up some corn tortillas. You can also use the flour tortillas. You can even use the crunchy taco shells if you like. Anything would taste good with this. This is such a resourceful meal because of that cheese mixture that's already in with those potatoes. You get so much flavor and it's so creamy and kind of like nothing I've ever had before, but I was kind of obsessed with it. It also makes a ton of food. We had so many leftovers. I also think you could serve this like over rice or even as a side with something else. This is what everything looks like without any toppings or anything. You don't even need toppings. I did add some sour cream and cilantro to mine when the time was right because I had it, but it doesn't need it. And for leftovers, I ended up doing two things with mine because I had so much. I ended up making a breakfast burrito with some eggs and it was fabulous. And I also ended up making some like crunchy tacos in the oven and broiling them so that they got crispy on the outside. I wish I got footage of that, but that was so, so good. Next up, we have a cheesy chicken pot pie with a hash brown crust that, yes, maybe it doesn't look completely amazing and you'll see how they came out out of the pan, but it is so delicious. My husband was like, how could it not be good with all the ingredients in this? This is awesome. So if I were to make this again, I would have just gotten one more box of hash browns, but I made it work with the one that I had. You wanna rehydrate your hash browns according to the package instructions. Just add hot water to it and let it sit for a little while. And then add that to three tablespoons of melted butter and just mix that around. And I did add some anti no nos everything seasoning to that because it's just my life these days. I still have a discount code for you guys. If you're on the fence, it's down there. It's still good. So the original recipe says to use like a large muffin pan, like the four size, but I don't have that. So I just sprayed down the smaller ones and I'm like, we'll just make mini ones, which worked out okay. And then we're just gonna take our potatoes and then make little cups out of it. So kind of like if you've ever made like an egg cup like this, you just wanna make basically the bottom part of the crust out of potatoes. And I did just end up going in there with my hands and just kind of pushing them down because it made it a lot easier. So however you wanna do it. And you wanna cook those at 425 degrees for about 15 minutes. You wanna make sure they're just becoming golden on the top. And after doing that, you should have about a cup of hash browns left over and you just wanna shred in about a half a cup of shredded cheese or you can just use whatever you have for shredded cheese. 
And then I totally went rogue. The original recipe says to do like milk and flour and make the whole roux and whatnot. And I was like, why don't we just use cream of chicken soup, a can of vegetables and a can of chicken and that should pretty much do it. So much easier. So if you want and you don't have that stuff on hand, you can make your own uh, mix. The, the recipe is there. But for me, this was so much simpler just to mix everything together, season it as you like, make sure to give it a taste, make sure it's not too salty, add a little salt, pepper, and you're gonna be good to go. So once the little pies come out, you just wanna fill them with your filling and then we're going to top them with the cheesy hash brown mixture and then we're going to return to the oven and bake for another 20 to 25 minutes until it's golden brown bubbling ready to go now here's where i got myself into a little bit of trouble maybe my impatience could have something to do with it i probably should have let them cool longer and it may have also been the combination of having you know maybe a little too few hash browns but i should have waited just a bit until they really cooled down because when i took these out they just kind of plopped all over the plate and they did not stay as little muffins. However, when I went back later, after we had all eaten and I had literally one of them left, it came up perfectly and it was a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful little muffin. So if you don't really care how it looks, then maybe just make it in a pie pan and let it do its thing. But I also think you could probably serve these for like a party or something and be, people would be like, oh my goodness. So if you wait, you actually just wait till they're just warm, then you could have really cute little cups. But regardless of their shape and size, these were a huge hit. The flavor was amazing. It was so good. And I kind of liked it easier than making your own pie crust, just reconstituting the, uh, the hash browns. And that's kind of a good tip. To keep the Dollar Tree inspiration going, go ahead and click on this next video because it's going to give you some awesome Dollar Tree dinners. Like you.